Hi everyone, Shabbat Shalom. We are in Parshat Matot Maseh this week, in the end of the Book of Numbers. And I'd like to talk with you today about something that appears towards the end in Parshat Maseh, which are Are Miklat, otherwise known as an Ir Miklat, that's the singular, a city of refuge. Are Miklat, cities of refuge. So what is a city of refuge? When an accidental murderer, the Torah tells us, or when someone who doesn't intend to, t to kill someone, but does so either by accident or without intention, they would flee to six cities, which were designated as cities of refuge, where they would live until the death of the Kohen Gadol. And they couldn't be um, attacked or killed while they were in those cities of refuge. And this is introduced in this Parsha. And I was listening to a podcast of Yiska Smith's uh, with the Pardes Institute in Jerusalem. And she often teaches about uh, Hasidic readings or Hasidic interpretations of Torah. Um, and she spoke about spiritual cities of refuge for spiritual murderers. And that caught my attention because uh, I didn't know what she meant by that. And so I'd like to share with you a little bit of what she shared with me or with the podcast listeners um, and talk a little bit about um, how it relates to us in this moment in time. So there is a flow of vitality, she, she talks about, from the creator, from the divine, from God, whichever word you want to choose, from, from the creator to the created, to us as human beings. We're commanded to love and listen and cleave. Because um, it will be uh, the life and length of our days. Um, and how do we connect to this flow of vitality from the divine, from the creator? Through observance of mitzvot. Through um, aligning um, with uh, mitzvot, we enter into a nurturing connection with God. And so... When we sin or we uh, choose to do something that isn't really great for us to be doing, um, we are depriving ourselves of the life force which is inherent within a particular mitzvah. And so by depriving ourselves of this life force within the particular mitzvah, we are committing spiritual murder. So you can take that or leave that, but it's an interesting approach to, um, to this idea of a city of refuge, of what it means to be an accidental or an unintentional murderer. Um, and <clears throat> I appreciated this connecting it to taking care of our souls and taking care of our connection with God. Um, and so she, she brings in uh, different texts. Um, she brings in um, a piece from Likutei Sichot, which is from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Um, she also brings in the Rambam um, and um, the uh, Sefer Chinuch, which I've brought in a couple of times before, which is the Book of Education. It talks about different mitzvot, uh, which are in each Parsha. The Sefer Chinuch was written uh, in the th around the 13th century and is anonymous, written in Spain. Um, <clears throat> and we know that uh, there are 613 mitzvot in the Torah, but the majority of these mitzvot require specific hours or specific days or specific circumstances to do them. But we learn from the Sefer Chinuch that there are six mitzvot which can be done at all times by all individuals in all places in all circumstances, which what are these things? This is very exciting. So the first one is belief in God. The second is to avow the oneness of God. The third is to denounce sin. The fourth is to love God. <clears throat> the fifth is to have awe of God. And the sixth is to avoid temptation to sin. And by participating in, by doing these six mitzvot, um, Yiska is sharing, um, these uh, rabbinic sources say that by participating in, by, by doing these six mitzvot, they bring about protection from spiritual harm, from neglecting other mitzvot, or from negative midot, uh, which are emotional uh, dispositions or character traits. <clears throat> so by doing these six mitzvot, um, we are bringing about a spiritual protection for our souls, for ourselves, and for our families. She says, fleeing to the basics can save our spiritual lives. And by doing these six mitzvot, uh, it's an opportunity to regain our spiritual lives. 
This is particularly interesting to me because on Friday evening, going into Shabbat, we're entering into Rosh Chodesh Av, the month of Av, which kicks off, which kickstarts uh, a three-month period of the high holidays, right? We go from the month of Av into Elul and into Tishrei. And we're moving into moments of reflection and soul searching, soul attention, soul attending, which often catch us off guard because we're enjoying our summers, we're distracted, and then all of a sudden we're in it and it's hard to find that spiritual connection. I know for myself, it can be challenging to just walk into services and say, okay, we're doing it. We're doing all this really intense spiritual work. Do it. Uh, I know my, my, I have a sense that my soul is kind of like, I'm not ready. I can't, I can't do that. Um, and so this is an opportunity. This Friday, this Saturday, this Shabbat, as we enter into Rosh Chodesh Av, as we enter into the month of Av and the beginning of this three-month period, it is your invitation, my invitation, everyone's invitation to slow down, to catch our breath, and to take a moment to feel out where we are spiritually. So to this end, I'll ask, what might it look like to begin to pay closer attention to your soul's needs? To slow down and see if you can feel it out. What does it feel like? What are you needing in this, what do you need in this moment? What might it look like to pay closer attention to the connection or lack of connection between yourself and the divine and the creator of the world? So these six meets vote can sound a little intense to many of us. Um, and the first one might seem insurmountable, belief in God. Uh, it it's, might be quite a, a hurdle, quite a task. So I'm going to offer some suggestions, some reframing of some of these, these meets vote. If the original meets vote meet you where you are and you want to jump right in, terrific. If not, uh, maybe this reframing will, will help you get started. Um, so what would it look like to lean a little bit into an attitude or a perspective of belief and trust with the people around you instead of an attitude of cynicism and distrust. What might it look like to try and cultivate unity rather than division in your workplace, in your family, with your friends? Can you speak up when you see mistreatment of others in small ways, in large ways, speaking up when you see mistreatment of others? Can you behave with more love towards the people around you? Can you let your guard down a little bit to, to open up and behave with more love towards the people around you, whether you're waiting in line at the car dealership or at the auto shop or on the phone with someone about Wi-Fi or at work? Can you perhaps turn off your phone or leave it at home this Shabbat and look around you, experience a little bit of awe at what is in the world? at the truly fantastical uh, modern advances that we enjoy today. And when you feel tempted to do something that you know isn't the right thing to do, can you pause for a minute and think, what's going on with me in this moment? What do I need right now? What's a choice that I can make right now that leans a little bit closer to the right thing to do? So I invite us all to take this Rosh Chodesh, take this Shabbat, to set our intentions for the high holiday season and to settle in. I think it might help us make our high holiday experience even more meaningful. Shabbat Shalom.